Hello everyone, this is the KMN 1971, back again, running down that track with another comic stack. How you all doing out there this weekend? Happy Memorial Day weekend, I hope you all have fun, be safe out there. Um, I'm a little hungover this morning, I hardly ever go out for drinks, but my friends called me out last night and um, I felt I had to go. I mean, when you have one of your friend's girlfriends calling you waiting for not going out on Memorial Day weekend, you really have to go, so a little groggy this morning, it was a fun time though. So anyway, getting into the comic book haulage part of the video, we have DC Bombshells number 17 and 18. Awesome connecting cover. As I've said before, I've always been a sucker for connecting covers, and this is no different. As you can see on the left here, you have basically the Gotham City Sirens with Harley, Ivy, Catwoman, along with Zatanna. And uh, on, the other, on the other cover, 18, you have Mira, and um, it seems like they're all teaming up against the... Uh, the Joker's daughter. So, I don't know much about this artist, Aunt Lucia. Uh, forgive me if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, but um, really like the art on here. I don't really care for the interiors that much, and um, I basically just bought this for the cover. I tried to flip through it, but it just wasn't my deal. But beautiful covers. Okay, as I've skated before, I'm trying to implement stuff that's not necessarily my full pull list, but things that I've been buying that are recently current or kind of current and things that I've really ended up digging. So this is of course the button parts one and two. I wanted to show these off last week but um, at my local comic book shop they pulled these two no problem but um, for some reason they weren't able to pull the, the cover A's, the, the lenticular covers I guess for me for some reason or another probably because they were hot so I had to go through Midtown so I didn't want to show them all off until I had the complete set but the button um, great story. I love, I, I'm all in on DC Rebirth, Rebirth right now. They have generated a lot of excitement. They seem to be embracing their legacy again, which was one of the main um, criticisms of the New 52, throwing out the, the baby with the bathwater, if you will. And uh, they, I like how they have generated excitement without the use of the gratuitous use of variant cover ratios and... Um, like mega line events and renumberings so this has been really good uh, if you notice along dc rebirth they've had like little mini events like say i am bane um jla versus well justice league versus a suicide squad which i realized was criticized but it was basically just um, a superhero team mashup it's supposed to be fun at least it wasn't a 12 potter like a versus x right so um and, of course, with the button, Superman Reborn, another example of these little mini contained event, events that generate fan excitement but don't really go after the fans' uh, wallets that much and having to buy a whole line of books. So, uh, currently, the, 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 late, the latest storyline that I've been reading, which is also part of a couple of titles that I've been buying anyway, is the Lazarus project, uh, contract that's running through the, 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 the Titans, the Teen Titans, and Deathstroke. Another storyline that I'm really enjoying right now. So... DC, definitely on the right track. Going back to what generates excitement in comics to begin with. Great writing, great art, great characters. And that's all you need. I mean, it's a little disheartening when I, I might sound a little old, but when I read in an interview with Axel Alonso, who says that he doesn't believe that artists are a real draw for the comics anymore. I mean, are you crazy? One of the universal things, I mean, fads can change as years go on, and they do. But one thing that will be always true about comics for people that read them anyway is readership is attracted to great art and great storytelling and that will always sell a comic i mean just look at the walking dead they've been doing pretty well without any renumbering so, the button thumbs up i also picked this up just on principle giant size x-men number one my one dollar purchase and part of that x haul that i've been shipping away at so Speaking of X-Hall, here's X-23 number four. I have officially jumped on the X-23 bandwagon, and I just started picking up any kind of filler issues I've seen at one of my local comic book shops. I, I end up getting all these X-23 issues for like maybe $2, maybe a little bit less than that with my discount. So I remember passing by on Holly's first volume, and uh, I regret it <laughs> until this day, so... Uh, I, I believe this is our second volume, X-23. I'm not sure on that because I'm kind of new to the game. But yeah, I just picked up anything that he had. So here's issue number four. Um, 
issue number seven. Number 10, looking forward to that, uh, busting that one open. Number 12. Love this cover. Number 14. Uh, number 15. Sixteen. And seventeen. Does anyone know? I mean, this cover seems familiar to me. Is it an, an homage to that old eighties movie, Adventures in Babysitting? Uh, it, it seems that way. I'm not sure. And uh, capping off this week's in installment of X stuff. Well, for the most part. Magic number one, Mystic Arcana, or Arcana, Arcana. I think it's Arcana. So um, yeah, uh, I guess the news broke this week that. Um, what everyone's been speculating on is pretty much true that they're going to be basing it on the, the demon bear storyline from uh, the new mutants, early new mutants. And um, basically uh, a horror movie based within the X-Men universe in the super in, within the superhero genre. So they, they basically cast um, a, a beautiful young blonde to play magic in a horror movie setting, setting with superheroes. That formula just might work. I'm all for it if it's done well. All right, let's get those out of the way. A couple last issues. The Hands of Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu, number 125. Unfortunately, though, it's only a VG. Someone wrote a three seven, number 371 on there. It was probably, a, well, it was a newsstand edition, so. But just a placeholder, and it was only a couple of bucks anyway. The Invincible Iron Man 332. I just picked this up just because it was the last issue. This is probably the the worst era in uh, Iron Man history. This is the infamous uh, teenage Tony Stark <laughs> run on the title. So, yeah, whatever. But as far as like the main Marvel titles go, I've knocked off um, the last issues of Amazing Spider-Man, The Hulk, The Avengers, The Fantastic Four... Um, the X-Men, Iron Man, so I think all I have left now are basically like Captain America and maybe Thor to uh, scrounge up the last issues of books that were around before I was. I picked this up for five dollars. Um, I own this complete volume and I didn't bother going out for this when uh, going after this when it first came out obviously. But this is a J. Scott Campbell cover, and for five bucks, how can you turn it down? Very high grade, and as you know, I dig the Guardians, so why not? Batman and Robin Adventures, Sub-Zero, number one. Um, I think it was the YouTube poster Sunshine Collects Things that said that this was kind of hard to come by. And I want to say I think he was, uh, I, I believe he was right. Because this was this has been on my Midtown want list for well over a year, and it's never popped up. It's not an expensive book. I ended up checking on eBay after I picked it up yesterday. I only paid like maybe three dollars for this, but it goes for like the most I think like maybe ten dollars. But it just might be one of those hard to find Batman and Robin adventure um, specials. So, but you don't you never have to twist my arm to buy a Batman title. So <laughs> happy to have it. As you also know, I'm a fan of the Millennium Editions. A lot of these books I will not have in my uh, personal collection. So um, it's nice to get a high-grade re reprint of uh, some of these classic, classic uh, issues that came out. I'm a big lover of comic book history, so uh, I'm, I am a fan of these. So Action Comics number 252. Well, this is the Millennium Edition of Action Comics number 252, which features the first appearance of Supergirl. So... Um, unless one of those, you know, unless we, I come across one in a yard sale one day or whatever, and which would be kind of hard because I've never gone to a yard sale or, or flea market, but unless I stumble last backwards into a copy of this that's woefully underpriced, I'll, I'll never own an, an original, so very cool to pick it up. 
So, um, I ended up getting another bonus from my work as of lately. And as I've told you before, they don't give you cash. They end up giving you basically a voucher where you go online and you can either go to Beth, Beth, uh, Beth Bath and Beyond, Barnes and Nobles. It's basically like gift certificates. They don't want to give you cash because they want to make sure that you shop and buy yourself something as a reward. So every time that they give me one of these, I choose Amazon to use my gift card on because that's the only venue that I can use to buy comics for free, basically. But it's usually always a pain in the ass. So as I was um, shopping around, I, I've been looking for, I've been collecting the Millennium Edition foil variants. There, there were five of them. And uh, the hardest one to end up getting, is, or to find rather, is Crisis on Infinite Earths. Um, it's just very elusive. I've never seen it out in the wild. I've seen it listed on eBay uh, a couple of times, and it doesn't last long. And they're they're priced pretty high, between like sixty to eighty dollars. And I'm not all about that, so I end up finding that on Amazon of all places for like twenty five, twenty eight dollars. So I ordered it, and I waited a couple of weeks. I contacted the seller. Turns out it was lost in the mail. I was like, damn. But the seller was really cool. They refunded me my cash. Came back. I ended up finding another seller around the same price. Bought that, and a week later, I ended up getting this in the mail. The regular edition of Crisis, number one. So, uh, I contacted that seller, and I said, Well, what's what's going on here? Um, I, I bought the foil uh, variant edition as advertised, and you sent me the, the regular edition. In just a regular envelope, too. No protection. So... They were nice enough, so they refunded me all of my money back, which which is cool, but kind of a pain in the butt. I mean, if you're going to be a seller, you, you should know what you're selling. So um, I ended up taking that money back, and then on eBay of all places, because now, now at this point, I'm on a mission. And it was just one of those books that I always search around for, no problem. And for $10, for $10, I finally ended up getting my Crisis on Infinite Earths foil edition awesome out of all the foil editions it's um probably the the least um i don't know it, it, it looks pretty plain jane not compared to the rest of them easy way to tell the difference if you're just shopping for it online right here as you can tell that it has like a little bit of silver foil over where the up upc box would be so easy way to tell but yes, very happy to finally have Crisis on Infinite Earths. Number one, foil edition. Finally, I've been searching around for that for like a year. And so once I picked that up, I had to go out and snag this bad boy up. All-Star Comics Millennium Edition, number three, foil edition. So that will bring my quest for all the foil editions to a close, finally. Now, where did I leave the other ones? Oh, right here. So for those of you keeping track at home that would like to collect these, Crisis, number one, All-Star Comics, number three, Justice League, number one, Superman, number one, and my particular favorite, obviously, Batman, number one. So those are the five uh, foil variant editions for when the, uh, DC came out with their Millennium Edition series, which is, now that I think about it, after laying all those out, I find it, what an odd selection of books to pick. I mean, I don't have a problem with any of the five that they picked, very worthy, but how can you keep leave out sensational comics? If it's supposed to be a trinity, how can you not have Wonder Woman in one of these foil variants? Weird. But that was cool. Also from uh, Amazon. I ended up picking up X-23, number one, from her second series. Pretty nice. Um, I finally ended up snagging a copy of Lois Lane 106, her I Am Curious Black, <laughs> uh, when they were trying to be politically uh, correct, but still kind of falling a little bit short. But uh, really nice copy, unfortunately, though. Um, I mean, this looks like... 
very fine, at least, and, and it probably would would be, but I'm not sure if it was a production error or whatnot, but it does have a staple pop right at the top. It doesn't look like it, it was pulled at all. It just looks like it was wrapped completely wrong because this comic is super, super clean on the inside. I only paid $20 for it, which is probably the, the going rate for a VG copy, maybe, maybe a little bit less, but I was happy to finally um, check it off the list. It's not one of those that, if I do find one at a decent price, that's complete in at least a fine condition, I'll probably pick it up. But this was just one of those that I just wanted it for the, for the novelty, I guess. Okay, I am still on my Fantastic Four Bronze Age kick. So, Fantastic Four, number 121 through 123, features um, Silver Surfer, Galactus, um, Stanley. Um, I believe Stanley wrote this story also. So, um, yeah, he did. So, th for some reason or another, this is one of those um, storylines that, if you look on Midtown Comics, they have these priced pretty darn high. And depending on what comic shops you go to, these could be priced, priced pretty high also. I guess they're um, allegedly kind of like classic Bronze Age. So, Silver Surfer, Galactus, Fantastic Four, Stan Lee writing on... Um, yeah, count me in. So I ended up scrounging this up on eBay probably a month or so ago for probably like $10, $15, which um, in a fine plus condition, I, I can't complain about it. And at a local comic book shop, I ended up picking up 123. I'm also on the lookout for 120, 122. I'll find it sooner or later, but check this out. And yes, that is Richard. I will always be known as a Tricky Dick Nixon. And he is kind of a tricky dick during this episode. I mean, this episode, this comic, too. I want to say a little bit of a chauvinist surprise. So, yeah, but really cool. And anytime that you can get a comic, I mean, look at this. You have the Silver Surfer, you have the Fantastic Four, and you have Richard Galactus, and you have Richard Flippin' Nixon on, on the same cover. That is awesome. This is another comic from that collection that I've been nipping away at. An another book that was not high on my list, but hey, for ten dollars, I I couldn't turn it away. Champions the one number one. It's uh, the first appearance of the Champions team, I guess. And uh, oh, it is it's rough. It's like <laughs> this is some pretty cheesy '70s stuff, man. Some pretty rough art in there too. So, in the worst uh, angel costume ever. It's like look at that. It's like angel during the disco stage i'm not sure all right and i will end it off with the bargain of the week astonishing tales number 25 another bronze age beauty that was on my list this is the first appearance of deathlock i want to say it might be george perez's first marvel comics work i'm not sure about that but i'm i i kind of think it i well it might be all right before i stumble on my words a little bit more than usual so, Astonishing Tales, number 25, pretty high-grade, beautiful, beautiful color, cover. First appearance of Deathlock, and I snagged that one up for, like, 20 bucks, which was odd because he had another copy in a little bit, well, about the same condition, maybe a little bit worse, not as nice as this one, and he had a $50 tag on that one. So, I will snatch that up every day, and it's another Bronze Age um, first appearance off my list. So, that's all I have for this week. I will be back next week with another comic book haul. So thank you all for watching, liking, um, and just overall geeking out with me once again on a weekly basis. It's very appreciated. So have a great weekend out there. Be safe, and I will see you all next week. Take care. See ya.